Praise the Lord. Good morning. Hallelujah. I hope this message has found you well. I expect that it has. And if you're down and out, it's going to get a lot better. Amen. We just came through an entire week talking about the heart and what the Bible says about the heart and really getting our place, you know, transition ourselves into a place to receive the blessings of God. I mean, after all, it's when we get our heart right that God is able to bless us and do things in us and through us and around us and use us for his glory and for the advancement of the kingdom of God and increase in the kingdom of God, increase in our own lives. It's when we get our heart right that God is able to do that. And I'm telling you, I'm excited to go to the next level here and talk about faith. Man, faith. That is the foundation of the entirety of the word of God is our faith. And, and talk about the importance of faith, the importance of applying faith. And it helps us go through every single day. You know, a lot of times we spend most of our time praying and not acting. We pray and we ask God for things. We ask God for breakthrough. We ask God for answers. We ask God for blessings. We ask God for increase. But we have faith, but we don't have the action. We don't put the force behind the faith. And I'm going to read this to you. We're going to be in the book of James. And I'm going to start in verse 14. This is powerful stuff. You know, maybe, maybe you're watching this and you're saying, wow, Pastor Andrew, I have been praying and seeking God for a long time. And for some reason, I haven't been getting the breakthrough that I've been looking for. This could be exactly what you need in order to get to the next level and see that breakthrough. Watch this. Verse 14 says, What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? Mm. Listen to this. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what do it profit? He's saying, you know what, if somebody comes to you, they're cold, they're hungry or whatever, and you tell them to just go on about their way and just keep believing, and you don't meet the need, what good did it do them? See, without the works, without faith being put in motion, it's worthless. Verse 17, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Faith by itself. Now, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, right? How does faith come? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. See, faith is coming to you right now. As you hear this, as the word of God goes forth, faith, your, your faith is being filled. But there's something else that activates faith. 18 says, yeah, man say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show you thee my faith by my works. Woo, glory to God. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. He's saying, hey, it's not just good enough that you believe in God. The devil himself, the devils and the demons of hell, they believe in God. Now watch this, verse 20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Then God gives us an example in verse 21 and 22. He says, what not Abraham our father justified by works. Now, you have to understand, Abraham, by every account, was a man of faith. He had obeyed God over and over and over. So was his faith alone enough to allow him and enable him to be the father of many nations? Or was it his faith in motions? Watch this. When he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar, whoa, why did God require Abraham to take his son upon the mountain and lay him down on that offering. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Watch this. Verse 22, seest thou have faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Watch 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Oftentimes, as Christians, we miss out on the blessings of God. We miss out on breakthrough day after day after day because we've heard the word of God and we have faith. But where we fail more times than not is we don't put that faith in motion. Gosh, I, I remember 
Oh, man, I remember when the Lord showed me this. I was like, oh, my goodness. I was believing God in my finances. And I was believing for God to come through. And, man, I tell you, we really needed a breakthrough. And the Lord showed me. He said, you, you want me to bless you financially, but you don't trust me with your finances. And I thought, I, I said, Lord, of course I trust you with my finances. That's why I'm praying and asking you to bless my finances. And, he, and I, I heard the Lord say, no, you do not trust me with your finances or you would give out of what you have. And I thought, well, I don't have a whole lot. And it hit me. My faith wasn't in motion. If I trusted God with my finances, if I trusted God to break through in my life, call the increase of the overflow in my life, if I truly trusted God and I had faith in God, then I'll give God everything that I had. Trusting and knowing in faith that through my, through my faith, being put in motion, taking what God had already blessed me with and giving it back in with him into the kingdom of God that God would call the increase because he's faithful. Amen? Glory to God. I want to ask you right now, what are you believing God for? What are you trusting God for today? Is it a better job? Is it for breakthrough in your family? Is it deliverance in your marriage? Is it increasing your finances? Is it a new home? Is it a new car? Is it a college education for your kids? There's so many things that you could be believing God for. And in those areas, I want to encourage you right now, put your faith in motion. The Bible says that God required faith in motion of Abraham, a man that had proven time and time again, a man that had literally moved through the wilderness over and over and over out of obedience to God. And still, God required him to take Isaac up to the mountain. And the Bible says that Abraham trusted and had faith in God and was willing to even sacrifice his own son. Now we know that God did not uh, allow Abraham to sacrifice his son. In fact, the Bible says that God provided, whoo, he provided a sacrifice for Abraham so that Abraham would have what he needed so that he would not have to take his son Isaac and offer him up. Glory to God, hallelujah. What are you believing God for? Are you putting your faith in motion today? Are you going through day after day after day having faith but not putting it in motion? Are you believing God in an area of your life that you say you trust Him with but you haven't surrendered and put that faith in motion? The Bible says clearly right there. Faith without works is dead. Woo, glory to God. Putting that faith in motion saying, God, I trust you with everything. Now that we've spent a week talking about the heart, God, and getting my heart right, I would hate, Lord, to miss out on my blessings and my breakthrough because I don't trust you enough to put my faith in motion. You know, we as humans, you know, we got so much to do. We got so many things to take care of, so many bills to pay. And oftentimes we miss God, especially in our finances because we want God to pour out, but we don't want to We don't want to pour out of, out of ourselves and what we have. And sometimes we just need to stop and realize that our source is the Lord. Every good thing comes from God. Every blessing, everything that you have comes from the Lord. And see, the devil wants to rob us. He wants to, you know what he wants to do today? He wants to destroy your blessing by hindering you from putting your faith in motion. How does he do that? By coming with doubt. So you can have faith in your heart and then doubt in your mind. You see what I mean? You can say, well, I have faith in my heart. I believe in the word of God. Well, the Bible says right there, verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, but the devils also believe and tremble. See, it's not enough that we just believe in God. We have to trust God. And, and how do we show that we trust God? By surrendering what we have. I remember my wife and I believed in God financially for a breakthrough. We didn't have a whole lot. And when the Lord spoke to me that, and he said, you don't, you don't trust me with your finances. You're asking me for finances. You're asking me for a financial breakthrough, but you don't trust me in your finances. You're not putting your faith in motion. I remember I was standing in church, literally. It was on a Sunday morning. It was offering time and they were praying. And man, I was, I was just so stressed out because I was like, man, I don't have much to give. And if I do give what I have, then guess what's going to happen? I'm going to be broke. I'm going to walk out of here. And the whole time I had been praying and asking God for a financial breakthrough. Isn't that just like the devil to lie to us and convince us that we need, to, we need to trust God for a breakthrough and then hold on to everything we have? We know what happened when the Israelites, you remember when the Israelites were in the camp there and they were going through the wilderness and the Bible says that God rained down manna and he told them, don't save none, don't hoard anything. And guess what they did? 
after God had blessed them with all that manna and fed them, supernaturally provided for them, they got baskets, they started heaping up. The Bible says that it rotted and it went to waste. You know, that's what happens when we try to hoard up everything that God blesses us with and try to control everything ourselves. If we truly trust God and we have faith in what God said and what his word declares, we will surrender everything to him and we trust that God is gonna to continue to supply over and over and over and over and over. And that the increase comes, that's what God does. If you look at the story of the fish and the five loaves where the little boy came and there it is, Jesus wanted to feed the multitudes, but nobody had anything. The little boy bring, brought the little basket, the fish and the five loaves. And the Bible says that when he gave, that Jesus took of it and broke it. Glory to God. Would you allow God to break your situation right now? Would you allow God to break the bondage that is holding you back from the increase and the overflow and the blessings? Let me tell you what Jesus did. Jesus broke that bread and broke that fish. And the Bible says that it supplied all of the multitude. It fed them. It was an increase in overcome. Can you imagine being there on that day and watching God supernaturally break? I mean, it just it just manifests over and over. Can you imagine the heart of that little boy that he didn't have a whole lot? And surely he didn't have enough to, to, to not feed, I mean, to feed, try to feed everybody. He could have said, I know I don't have enough to feed everybody. So what good is it going to do me to starve myself? and try to feed when I, I know I can't do all this. See, if he had depended on his self and what he had, Jesus would not have been able to do what he'd done because it was his faith in motion. He had faith that if he took what he had to Jesus, that Jesus would call the increase. Woo, and, and that he did. Amen. Glory to God. What are you believing God for today? What is it that the devil has hindered you in? Has he been talking you into trying to hold on to every little thing that you have, try to control your situation? Are you going to your checkbook, checking it over and over and over and over? Are you one of those that goes to your, your bank app on your phone over and over and you see the, the, the money's not there and you just try to control everything, move everything? That's not faith. That's doubt and unbelief. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you have, listen, if you have faith as small as a grain of a mustard seed that you can speak to that mountain, or I'd like to say this, you could speak to that bank account and say, increase in Jesus' name and give out of what you have. Give out of what you have and release it into God's hand and say, you know what, Lord? You provided this and you're going to do even more than that because, God, your word is true. You know, I've seen so many people miss out on the blessings of God because they just, they suffer. They suffer trying to control everything and do everything. If only we could do what the little boy did. You remember the story of the lady that had the issue of blood? The Bible says that she struggled with that issue for years. It For years she struggled. The Bible says that she had been to many physicians over and over and over, but she finally made a decision. She had heard that Jesus was a healer. She had heard that Jesus was a miracle worker, and she made a decision to put her faith in what she heard. Again, faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. So we know that she heard about Jesus. Amen. She heard about Jesus, which means she had faith, but she had not yet put it in motion. Then the Bible says that the lady had, she got up, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And the Bible says that that lady went against all odds, against everything, all the doubt, all the unbelief, even the sickness that was wrenching on her body. She said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to him. And she fought through that crowd. She took every little ounce of energy that she had and she fought and she fought and she fought and she touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? For I felt virtue leave my body. Glory to God. Jesus didn't turn around and lay hands on her. He didn't speak into her life. He didn't call down manna from heaven. None of those things. The Bible says that she put her faith in motion she touched the hem of his garment and instantly by faith she had been made whole. And he said, your faith has made you whole. Glory to God, hallelujah. When we put our faith in motion, that is when we see increase. That is when we see overflow. I've heard so many people speak against that and say, no, 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 God don't want this. And God, I'm gonna tell you right now, I heard those things. I had people speak like that into my life. And it wasn't until I started putting my faith in motion, as the Bible said, I started looking at what Abraham did. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his own son. Who 
in the world? Can you imagine? What if we just had a portion of that faith that said, you know what, God, I'm going to sacrifice my time. I'm going to sacrifice my prayer life. I'm going to sacrifice church on Sunday. God, I'm going to put my faith in my, I'm going to sacrifice some of my finances. If we were to step out even in a portion of what Abraham did or what the lady that had the issue of blood, if we were to step out like that, I believe, bless God, we would see miracles come to pass one right after another because faith without works is dead, but faith in motion comes alive. Jesus is moved by our faith. Glory to God, because it's in our faith. It's in our faith and through our faith and putting that faith in motion that God says, yeah, they trust me. Amen, they trusted me. They didn't try to heap upon themselves. They didn't try to hoard what I blessed them with. No, they put their faith in motion. Man, I tell you that right there. Mm. Glory to God. So many miracles, so many blessings, so many people right now bound in bondage because they're scared to put their faith in motion. Hallelujah. I had a, uh, I had a man tell me one time in church, he said, God don't need my money. God don't need my money. God don't need my time. If he's God, he can do whatever he wants to. I said, you know, sir, sadly, a lot of people believe like you do. And sadly, a lot of people will never see manifestations of the power of God and the miracles of God because they have talked their self into allowing their faith to become dead. Because when we take our faith and we set it on the side, we limit God. It's through faith, moving in faith. You remember the Bible says that as Jesus walked through the gate, the man was there and he couldn't walk. He couldn't walk and he, could, and he hollered for Jesus and Jesus said, what? what do you need? And he said, Master, if you will it, I can walk. And Jesus said, I will. Woo, that man's faith was with him. What if he had to sit at the gate and never holler for Jesus? The Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What if he had not put his faith in motion? The Bible says that that man got up and walked. Glory to God. And if God can raise that man up, if God can cause that man to walk again, if God can open the eyes that are blind, call Lazarus out of the grave, a man that was dead and gone and in grave clothes and had already begun to stink, if God can speak to that situation and call him out, what can God do with you and your faith in motion today? Oh, glory to God. How many people are getting a breakthrough right now? Mm, I know it. When the Lord told me to speak on this, you know, we get, we get countless messages of testimonies, people getting healed, delivered, set free, blessed. Man, I mean... Every kind of thing you can think of, and the Lord spoke to me to do this message, and I am expecting for the phone calls to come in, for the emails to come in. Glory to God for the letters to come in that God is doing exceedingly abundantly over anything you think of. I know that people are going to say, Pastor Andrew, when I put my faith in motion, I saw God's hand on my family. I saw God's hand on my job. I got that promotion. I got approved for that house. I got approved for that car. My son, my daughter's going to college. Bless God. I, I'm going into ministry full time. I'm, I am fully expecting for God to do amazing things because he is a God that when your faith is put in motion, he gets in motion. Glory to God. That's what he did. If you look, I can give you over and over and over. I can give you an example. Give me an example. You remember there Moses was standing in front of the sea. God could have split the sea without Moses doing anything. But do you remember what Moses did? God spoke to Moses, stretch out your staff. What if, what if Moses had said, no, I don't know about that. I'm going to look stupid if I stretch out my staff and this thing don't move. You know that doubt had to go through his mind. The enemy attacked him just like it does me and you. But Moses, he casted every, and he, the Bible says, take every thought captain and cast down every vain imagination. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt that Moses in that moment right there, that he, he put everything under his feet. And he stretched forth that staff in the, in the power of God through faith in motion and boom, there it went. The, the sea split wide open and everybody that rolled with him walked across on dry land. Everybody, because of his faith alone, in motion, everybody around him was blessed. Glory to God. Your family will be blessed. Your husband, your wife, your children, because you said, you know what? I'm not gonna sit here and just say that I have faith. You remember what he said? 
He said, what doeth it profit my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Moses could have stood at the scene and said, oh, I have faith. I have faith. And nothing happened. No, he obeyed God and he put that staff out there regardless of what he looked like, regardless of what, I mean, over a million people thought he looked like or whatever. He put that thing in motion and that thing, and God made a way when there seemed to be no way. And I'm gonna tell you right now, God will make a way in your situation when it seems like there's no way out of it. There's no way through it. Everybody told you you would never get approved. They told you you couldn't have it. You don't have enough. There's no way. All the negative things that have been spoken against you, when you put your faith in motion, glory to God, believing in the word of God and what God says, you can count it right now that God is going to make a way in that situation. Just say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead. Body with no spirit. What is that? Death. Take your, your physical body, remove the spirit. Boy, it's just a, it's an old carcass. It's dead. What moves this? What moves this old body? What's moving you today? The spirit inside of you is moving this. And that's what he said. He said, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. You got to put that faith in motion. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. When you put it in motion, it comes to pass. Woo, glory to God, there's revelation in that. Hallelujah. And I know that there are so many watching this right now. And I want to encourage you to step out in faith. You remember Jesus was out there on the water and there was Peter in the boat. Man, the wind was howling. The boat was rocking. Waves crashing. It was dark outside. Lightning and thunder and who knows, man. Sharks probably circling. you out there on the sea and all this stuff's going on. And as Peter looks out on the water and there's Jesus. Scary. The Bible says that he saw a ghost coming. And he spoke out there and he said, Master, if it's you, bid me to come. And the Bible says Jesus spoke one word to Peter. He said, come. And the Bible says that Peter stepped out of the boat on the water. And it wasn't until he got his eyes off Jesus that he began to sink. Have you had your eyes on Jesus? Have you been focused on him? Stayed upon him? Faith in him? Moving toward him? See, when, when Peter stepped out in motion toward Jesus, the Bible says that the miracle began to happen and Peter began to walk on the water. God made a way when it seemed to be no way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God is going to make a way in your life where there seems to be no way. The moment that you put faith in motion, glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost all over that. The power in God's word, it comes alive. When we get serious about God's word and we put things in perspective and we start believing in a supernatural God that does supernatural marvelous things, we don't serve a jack in the box and hope for it to pop out. No, God's promises are yes and amen. It's a fact. When we believe God and trust in him wholeheartedly, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 13, that he'll show up. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm, I'm believing and expecting for your life to change today. I'm expecting to hear from you. I'm expecting to get an email from you, a letter from you, a phone call from you. I'm expecting God to do marvelous things in your life. Because just like it changed my life and it changed my wife's life, our ministry, everything that we do, when we put faith in motion, things begin to happen. And I know that as you put this faith in motion, that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly over anything that you could think, ask, imagine, or dream. Glory to God. I want to pray for you. Father, I just pray right now, Lord Jesus, that everyone here, everyone watching, Father God, would just truly, Set aside all doubt, all unbelief. Lord, putting their faith in motion, God. Setting themselves up in the perfect position, the perfect place to prosper. To receive your blessings, the miracles from the throne that you would have them have. God, as they put their faith in motion, Lord Jesus, we are fully expecting you, God, to do your greatest works in their lives. Lord, I know that miracles are going to happen. Healing is going to be made manifest. Deliverance is going to happen. Lord, financial increase right now is going to happen, God. Lord, I pray right now that those things in which they have been sitting on the sidelines, Lord, that they're going to put their faith in motion and God, you're going to show up. We know it, Lord. We expect it, Father God. And Lord, we wait now, Lord Jesus, on the increase. In Jesus' name, everybody said, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Are you expecting? Are you expecting the word of God to be made manifest in your life? The Bible says in John, the truth will set you free. And make no mistake about it. This is the infallible word of God. The authority in your life. And by faith in motion, you're going to see those things in which you've been believing God for come to pass. Amen. I want to invite you to go to my website, andrewgreenministries.com. I want to ask you to go there and subscribe to the website and connect with the ministry and connect with me. And so that I can contact you through the weeks and through the months as God pours into me, I can pour into you. I can let you know what's going on inside the ministry. I can let you know where I'm going to be speaking, new messages that are coming out. And also, as you subscribe, you'll receive my monthly newsletter and let you know uh, about the new Abundant Life services that we have planned coming up. The Lord spoke to me and told me to start holding what's called Abundant Life services. I was seeking God and asking God about miracle signs and wonders. And I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I get hundreds, thousands of messages. People need in healing God. How, how do I get them? What, what do I do? Hundreds of thousands of messages just over a few months time, and the Lord said, I want you to hold a service, a special service regularly, regularly scheduled services for people to come that they can make plans and come to, that you can lay hands on them and pray with them and agree with them in faith and you will see healings, manifestations of miracle work and power. Glory to God. And I am believing that. And I want you to go to that website and stay, stay tuned into that website. Be ready for those announcements as those services, you can make plans to get there Whatever it is you're seeking God for, we're expecting for it to be made manifest, if not before, definitely in those services. I believe that wholeheartedly without a shadow of a doubt. As well as, I want to ask you to go right now and go there to the Give tab on the website. Again, it's andrewgreenministries.com. Go there to the Donate tab, the Give tab, and plant a seed financially back into the kingdom of God through this ministry. But I want you to also pray I want you to pray and believe God and come into partnership with Andrew Green Ministries and become a faith partner. You say, Pastor Andrew, what is a faith partner? What is a faith partner? It is a two-sided relationship. My side is to pray and believe God for you and preach the gospel uncompromised and to obey God and make sure that you have the messages that you can take and you can read and you can study and you can apply God's word on a regular basis. And I can pray for you and believe God for you. And in return, you can do the same. You can pray for us. You can apply the word of God that is, is bringing forth through these, these videos and sermons and telecasts, through the radio, any way that you've heard these messages, you can be a faith partner through your prayer, your faith, and your finances. Without generous givers, we couldn't do all the things that we do. Without our faith partners, there's no way we could do everything that we do. You truly, as a faith partner, become the hands and feet of Jesus. And there is a special anointing to those that are busy about the Father's business. Make no mistake about it. God blesses the hands of the cheerful giver. Just like the little boy we talked about a little while ago. He brought his little fish and he brought his five loaves and God broke it and blessed and feed the multitudes. And God is going to take your financial seed, your giving, He's going to break it, and he's going to pour it out upon the multitudes. And because of that, you're going to be blessed in the kingdom and in your life. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask you to go right now. Do something big. Put your faith in motion. Don't be a hearer of the word. Just listen, so many people miss God by being a hearer of the word only and not a doer. When we hear the word of God like this, we put our faith in motion, and we become doers of the word of God. So go right now. To andrewgreenministries.com. Glory to God. Go right now and sow a seed financially into the kingdom of God. Go right now and put your faith, and I'm agreeing with you in faith, believing that God is going to do exactly what he said in his word. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe, I feel the Holy Spirit on that. There's so many people being freed from financial bondage right now by putting their faith in motion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 22 says, See thou have faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, touch him. I can feel the Holy Spirit moving on this, and I know 
that some of you, God, is speaking to you right now. And maybe it's your very first time ever sowing financially into the kingdom of God through a ministry. But God is going to bless you. Make no mistake about it. Listen, he does. He, he is faithful. He is faithful and loving and kind. And he wants to bestow his blessings upon his children. I want to ask you to sow something specific in agreement with James chapter 3, verse 22. It says, Seest thou have faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Glory to God. So in agreement with James chapter 3, verse 22, I'm going to ask you to go to andrewgreenministries.com and sow a financial seed into the ministry of $22. And I'm telling you right now, you just want, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to do things that you just, listen, brace yourself because you're going to say, I'm going to get the calls and the letters that says, hey, I've never done this before, but I sowed in the kingdom of God and Pastor Andrew, the word came alive. Go quickly, move quickly. Go and put your faith in motion. Go to andrewgreenministries.com. Sow that seed of $22 and watch God show up. You say, Pastor Andrew, I don't have $22. Well, I'm believing that partners in faith right now that are watching this are going to sow on your behalf. And I believe, and I'm asking all my partners right now that believe in God, believe in sowing and reaping, they believe in the power of God and faith being in motion and God calling the increase that you would step out on faith for somebody you've never met that's watching right now that don't have $22 to sow. I'm going to ask that you sow for yourself and for another friend somewhere, another brother and sister in Christ somewhere in the world. Watch God. He said, no greater love than a man lay down his life for another. Glory to God. Call me, email me, send me a letter. All the information is on the screen or in the uh, website there. You can get all the information, connect with the website, connect with me, and watch for the Abundant Life services that are about to launch in 2020. Go right now to andrewgreenministries.com. Subscribe to the website and get that $22 in the ground. Be blessed in Jesus' name.